Hi, this is Krista from Crystallized Designs, and I'm going to show you how to make a box knot for an I-cord necklace. And you will need to make an I-cord at the length you desire. Just remember that if you want this to be, I don't know, 24 inches in length, take into account for what your knot is actually going to use. So you might have to play around with it a bit. Um, all right, so the first step is to find the center of the yarn, or center of the I-cord, and I kind of already was doing that. But you want to match both ends. It doesn't matter. Um, I don't weave in my ends because I use that to secure it, but you can't secure this circle until after your knot is made. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to match my ends, and I'm going to make sure the I-cord does not twist over itself and that it is like that. So this is my midpoint. I'm going to put the others in my la or the ends in my lap. I'm going to do this slightly bigger than I would normally do for demonstration purposes, and then I'll show you how to do it with um, multi cords. So what we're going to do is we're going to take that midpoint and we're going to make we're going to take the left strand and cross it over the right to create a loop. <coughs> Excuse me. Then with the same strand that you crossed in front you're going to loop it behind. So I'm, again, I'm making this slightly bigger than I normally would, so you have somewhat of a pretzel shape right here. And again, that one is behind this loop. So now what we're going to do is we're going to take this lower strand and we're going to come up, and this one that crosses behind, we're going to go under that, over this one, under this one, and over this one. So just like, let me get my end out of there, just like that. I'm going to fix my cord here so it's all nice and even. Alright, so like this. Again, I'm spacing it out a little bit more just so you can kind of see what the shape is. And then I have my two ends here. Make sense so far? I'm hoping so. So now with the cord that we just pulled up, we are going to loop it behind this lower loop and through it. And if you have to, make sure um, if it's easier you can use a yarn needle or anything like that. Um, roving is harder to weave through because it, the ends do separate easily. Um, so you can use this if you're using normal um, plied yarn, it's not so bad. Okay, so back to this. We have this, we have an upper right loop and a lower right loop, a lower left loop and an upper left loop. With the right piece, we are going to loop it down and through that lower right loop. Okay, so I'm coming down i going to get rid of my yarn needle here, and through, okay? So that is how that looks. Now, with this other loop way up here, we are going to do kind of the same thing. What we're going to do is we're going to come around, but we're going over the lower left loop and through it on the bottom. Again, you don't want your cord to twist, you want it to be nice and flat. So that is the box knot really loose. Now to tighten this, you just kind of have to play, and it seems that I take forever playing with my knots just to even them out. But you want it flat and you want it nice and snug. So I'm just playing with the, the strands, just trying to tighten it up without making them all like wonky or whatever you want to call it. Oops. Okay. So there is the box knot. Um, this is a, a, a small knot. You also want to make sure that your ends kind of even up, so now I pulled too tight on this side and I have too much on this side. So if you don't care if you join it there, that's fine, but if you want to even it out, 
then you have to play with your strands more. So this is the longer one. So I'm just going to take that and pull it slightly through and I'm just going to follow it around the curves, still tightening that the way I'm coming from while pulling on where I'm going, if that makes any sense. Oops. All right, where am I here? Right here. So it just takes a little bit of plane. Now I'm lopsided a little, but let's see where my ends match up. Yeah, I did not pull enough. So we're gonna pull that. And again, you can kind of see where I'm pulling, hopefully. And then this line goes that way. And this line. And this is basically just playing with, oops, playing with the strands. I feel like I just messed it up. I have a big loop here and I don't want a big loop there. So we're going to pull that tighter. I don't feel like I have a big loop there. All right. So there's the box knot a little bit tighter. Let's see how I did on my ends and I'm getting more even. So again, this is just taking the time to play with it. So let's try a three stranded box knot necklace with I-cord. All right, so now I have to find my cords. I have multiple links here, so I'm just going to lay them in half and see which ones match up here. Okay, that one is shorter. And then that one is shorter. Oops. And let's see. Oh, Short is the winner. Okay, so we have three I cords that are somewhat shorter. So what we're going to do is we're going to find the halfway point for each. Okay, so that is the halfway point. I'm just going to lay them flat and nice up here, matching my ends, pulling it. That is midpoint. I'm going to just lay that there. I'm going to get rid of my yarn needle just so I don't lose it. And then this third one, I am matching up my ends and I'm finding the middle. Okay, so you can kind of see I'm putting all my ends together and I'm just going to slowly shift this down. You can kind of see um, I don't count my knots. I do it by a certain length and I'm okay with it being different lengths. That definitely adds personality to it um, and all of that. <clears throat> that being said, if you do have different lengths, you always want to start with the shorter one on the inside and then go up. So I'm going to move my longest one and my medium one off to the side. And I'm just keeping my ends matched. I'm going to lay those in my lap and find my mid-ground. Now I already found my mid-ground here. I'm going to lay that one next. And I'm just flattening all the pieces. Whoops. My middle ground. And I'm just making sure you don't want these bunched up because that's going to make your knot um, I like the word wonky apparently very wonky but basically you're going to do the same knot with multiple cords so we are considering these three one side and these three the other side so again we're taking the left side and crossing it over the right I'm going to move these down and then you want to take this making it slightly bigger so you can kind of see and grab it behind. Now you want all of these not to cross over each other. So I'm straightening them all out. I'm keeping these straight. Okay, so that is your first pretzel shape. Now you're taking the bottom one and you're looping that up over, under, over. 
Now this is where it gets tricky because you don't really want these to cross over each other. You're going to have a big bunch. So what I like to do is just get my ends through first where I want the knot to be. And then I play with the strands and try to get them. Okay, so now this one is overlapping the others. I'm going to pull that one. And now I'm going to pull, keeping it in this flat shape. Now, obviously, my ends are getting really small, so I'm definitely going to want to um, tighten this up a little so I have enough I cord. And I think I want to go extra on this side. So, again, this loop is larger, so I'm going to find it and I'm going to pull and I'm going to keep it kind of flat. All right. So this is where you have the two upper loops and the two lower loops. And we've completed this pass through. What we're going to take is these strands and we're going to loop it over and under. I actually did this backwards. Normally I do this side first. <clears throat> And that's fine. You can do either side first. It really doesn't matter. This one, though, goes under and over. Now, see, this one's overlapping, so I'm just going to kind of play with it to try and get it flat. And I have somewhat of a box knot, which looks really cool. Um, if you do this in cotton, this would be a great hot pad. It's real thick. Um, and sturdy. <clears throat> Excuse me. So now I'm going to tighten this up because this is not going to give me a necklace at all. So what I'm going to do is this is kind of my mid loop what we started with and I'm just going to slightly pull on the strands making sure that they stay flat. And if I need to, like I'm holding down with my other hand, the strands and I'm just following their path. And again, if you see one more loose, just pull on that single strand. <clears throat> now this side is a little loose, so we're going to pull those as needed. Sorry, my head's in the way. I hope not. All right. So, um, okay, so I really like that looks of it, but I feel like this loop, <clears throat> excuse me, is too short. So another thing you can do is you can see they're fairly even for the ends. And <clears throat> what you could do if this was the right length for a necklace is weave this one into that one and then this one, oh, it has no tail, into this one and then connect the two larger ones because this would technically be the back of the neck. So that would be easy enough to do with odd. But you're always going to end up with this V here unless you are exact on your sizes. <clears throat> All right, so let's get rid of this loop. I don't know which way to go. And again, this is just trial and error, playing with the length and tightening the knots. So I really like that. Um, that is a box knot. Again, if you have, I went with the shorter strands, so technically I would make a one strand, maybe a two strand um, with this box knot just to allow me more length to make a necklace. <clears throat> or I would use a longer strand, which I did not use. So that is how you make a box knot for the box knot necklace eye cord tutorial. If you like this pat or if you like this tutorial, make sure to hit that subscribe button so you get all other tutorials and patterns um, right to you and you get notified right away. Again, if you enjoyed it, please please subscribe, share your finished products um, projects um, by taking me on social media and we'll see you next time.